which is absolutely amazing but you can meet Mickey um, in the atrium very often he's very often there we've got Little Mermaid Andrew's just living his best life right now Little Mermaid is my favorite Disney film of all time as well so to be, to be yeah absolutely I don't know it's my absolute favorite yeah today we have a day at sea this is our last full day and I'm going to be doing a wandering Q&A today so I've asked some questions on Instagram and we're going to be answering them as the day unfolds so we're going to be going to Vanellope's which is a little sweet shop today experiencing everything that we haven't done so far so do keep watching to the end because there is loads coming and first up we're going for breakfast in Cabanas so I'm going to show you what's available for breakfast here and the timings for this may vary but at the moment it is 7.30 till 11am for breakfast and lunch is 11.30 till 2.45 they're not open for dinner because of course you have your dining rotation for dinner We've got our breakfast and I showed you some of the things that you can get and today they have the churro Mickey waffles. This is kind of an iconic cruise breakfast item and we haven't seen it all week. No, no, not that I've been here. Today, yeah, I've not been here every day but they do have that today which is exciting. I've got blueberry pancake, various other things. The breakfast here is really good actually, isn't it? Yeah. It's really, incredible. really nice. Okay, here we go. Very iconic cruise breakfast, the churro Mickey waffle. Andrew's just eaten some and is looking extremely happy right now. Oh my now. god, it's incredible. How insane is that? I'm gonna have to get another one of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to get a plate of five. That <laughs> is so good. 100% oh. recommend. When it's churro Mickey waffle day at Cabana's, get yourself here. Yeah. Do not miss out on this. This I is incredible. I can't believe that the cruise line's gatekeeping these. I know. <laughs> Who do they think they are? They can't, they can't give you these every day. They're no, too no, no, good. No, no. They're too good. They are incredible. We're now back at the atrium after that amazing breakfast and we're going to go and watch Inside Out 2, which is on in the theatre here. So whenever there's a new Disney film out, they will be showing it on the ship. And I still haven't seen it. I'm very excited for it. And we've got some princesses here in the atrium. Look at Tiana. She looks so beautiful. I did meet her the other morning. Her dress is just absolutely stunning. So you can see how easy it is to meet characters. There's not a huge long line, there's a few people waiting, but nowhere near as many as you get in the theme park. So if you are a huge fan of the characters, a cruise is a great way to meet so many in just a few days or a week. On the subject of characters, um, Andrew's just looking at his photos because you can get your photos, as I mentioned before. Look who's back here. <laughs> just casually having a little chat. We're just, we are, we're, we're best friends now. <laughs> The characters are everywhere, we love it. Oh, I do, on the back right there, yes. <laughs> it's actually magical. Look who's come to watch Inside oh, Out. Hi, Stitch. Hi, Stitch. Are you coming up, coming up for Inside Out? No. <laughs> he wants the snacks. He wants the snacks. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're gonna, oh, you can't oh, eat it. No. <laughs> it wouldn't taste very nice, Stitch. No. I wonder what your emotions would be like inside your brain. Oh, oh very oh. manic. <laughs> You'd really have a coffee, coffee emotion. Yeah, all the coffee. All the coffee cakes. Yes, yes. Coffee everything. drinks, coffee yes. snacks. All, all, the, all the yes. snacks, all the snacks. Who cares about your badness level when coffee exists, right? <laughs> yes. We're about to watch Inside Out. I can't film it, obviously, so I'll let you know how it is afterwards. Tunes going in the atrium today. <laughs> Andrew's loving it. <laughs> I was just capturing you dancing. <laughs> We're here at Cabanas again, and one of the questions I got today is, is there a buffet and what's it like? So you guys saw it for breakfast this morning. We're gonna go in here for some lunch and I'm gonna show you what it's like. One of the best things that they have on the lunch buffet is the pizza, in my opinion. The pizza here on the ship is so good. And they have a little Italian section. They do also have chicken tenders and fries and mac and cheese and all that kind of thing. Corn, shepherd's pie and rice. 
different pasta options like baked pasta, like a fettuccine type thing there. And I have some calamari and mahi mahi. Oven baked rice and cabbage roll. And they have chicken and beef dishes here. Always lots of french fries, very popular. Some cold items here like cheeses and meats and little kind of wrap things. Salads kind of already made up. They've got one there with avocado, just like a regular cucumber and tomato type thing, and then Caesar salad. Then they have crab claws here and lots of shrimp and lots of dessert here, little fruit cups and stuff too. Okay, now we're done with lunch. We're gonna go in here to Vanellope's to get some kind of dessert and the hours for this are 11 a.m. till 10 p.m. That can vary by cruise, but that's what it is today. And we're not gonna be getting this today, but they do have a couple of really big ice creams that are like family challenges. So they have Ralph's Family Challenge, which is six scoops of ice cream. And that is this one here that comes in the trophy cup. And they also have Vanellope's Go-Kart Sunday, which is slightly smaller, I think. And that one is 12.95. And this is the uh, Vanellope's car that you get that it comes in. That's very, very cool. We ended up going for gelato from Vanellope's Sweet Treats. And I have, I've forgotten already, the, the cookies and cream and pecan, I think. And Kate had, which one? Uh, butter pecan gelato yep. with whipped cream topping and cherry. Nice. So yeah, these look really, really good. They're actually really quite big. This is a two scoop and cakes is a one. I also got the little salted caramel pearls and the crushed up Twix on top. I have had more amazing gelato in the last week between going to Italy and Greece and now this. Incredible, it has been a very, very good gelato week for me. Okay, Andrew has some cupcakes here and look how impressive these are. So good, and then look at the Beauty and the Beast one. Sorry. The Beauty and the Beast one is absolutely beautiful. And then we've got a cruise line one with a little cruise line symbol in the top. Mm. They're amazing. Okay, I'm now down here on deck four. I was up on 11, but it was very noisy up there because they always have the Disney movies playing. And I didn't think you guys would be able to hear me. So as you can see, we are having our day at sea. And I'm just gonna do a couple of your questions here. And then I think we're gonna go and grab a coffee. I'll do a couple more inside when we're in by the atrium. Renee is asking, have you played any bingo yet? I haven't. When I did the staycation cruise, I think I played some bingo. We have been doing a lot on this trip and we've had a lot of different ports of call and we've gone and done tours and things like that. And when I've been on the ship, I have been doing different things. So no bingo yet, but they do have bingo. And um, someone is saying, is it suitable for adults? Yes, definitely. They have adult only areas and they have like coffee bars and bars for cocktails and alcohol and stuff like that. Areas to sunbathe and lounges, which are just for adults, like a whole separate section. And a little pool, which is just for adults. So there's plenty of stuff like that. The kids club in the nursery. So your kids can go there if you do have children with you and you want to have some adult time. So definitely they have a lot of adult only stuff going on. Lizzie is asking, will you be showing us the merch? Yes. In fact, you've probably already seen that in one of the previous vlogs. So I took a look around all of the shops. They have some amazing merchandise here on the ship. Lots of Disney Cruise Line stuff. They actually had more than I had anticipated and expected. So yeah, you should have already seen that by now. Would you consider cruising on other cruise lines? I would definitely consider it now that I've done this one. Um, I loved the cruise experience in general. So I'm always up for any type of travel, you guys know me. Uh, so I would always be up for doing anything different. Stacey is asking, would you ever do a solo Disney cruise? I actually did the staycation cruise solo back in 2021. So I have already done a mini Disney cruise solo. I must admit, I do prefer going with somebody. If I'm gonna do anything solo, it would probably be the parks. I do that a lot on my own. But for a cruise, I think I probably would rather go with someone. Let's do one more while I'm out here. Someone's saying, do you plan to book a cruise to Castaway Key? I would love to do a cruise, which is part of a Disney World trip and then do a few days on a cruise. One of the cruises that goes from, um, I think it's Port Canaveral, isn't it, in Florida? I would love to do that and combine the two, so definitely that's something I'm gonna look into. And while I'm here, let's just do one more. Um, Jade is asking, what was your favorite port of call? Definitely 100%, it was Naples, and we went across to Capri. So the island of Capri was 100% my favorite thing. I loved that. Mykonos was amazing as well, but Capri was just beautiful. I wish we'd have had more time there, and I would definitely go back on a different trip just to go to Capri. It was absolutely stunning. Beautiful day again. We have had the best weather. It's been beautiful sunny skies pretty much the entire time. We haven't seen any rain or kind of grey skies. We did have mega, mega wind in uh, Mykonos. It was the windiest day I have like ever experienced. Did you get today, Mickey? Mickey, the OG, the one. Look at this. Andrew just nearly had a had a moment. I've actually just screamed in the middle of this. Can we swap? <laughs> 
That's not normal. <laughs> we haven't had Ariel yet. We, no, I didn't know amazing. they did Ariel. She's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Our coffees at home are going to be so, so boring now. So now I've got my little Ariel coffee. I love that I got Ariel. That's one I haven't had yet on the latte art. I was looking for another place to answer some questions and then I thought, what better place than this incredibly fancy little royal throne with this beautiful uh, mosaic in the background. So I thought I'd answer a few more questions here. This is down in the atrium, by the way, next to the Bon Voyage bar. Mr. and Mrs. Lane are asking, does the cruise have the same magical feel as the parks? We're debating one soon. I'm glad somebody asked that question because one of the things that you notice as soon as you walk onto the ship, and I was talking about this with someone this morning, is that it really does have that Disney feel to it. You know that feeling whenever you walk into one of the Disney resorts or when you are in the parks, that real Disney feel, even down to the smell, like when you walk into a resort lobby, it really does have that on the ship. You kind of know straight away that you are on a Disney cruise ship and it's not just a regular one. It really does have that magical feel and the service is incredible. So yes, if you love that kind of Disney magic feeling that you get when you're in the parks and the resorts, you definitely do get that here. That is one of the first things that I noticed when I did the cruise on the Magic and also when I got onto this cruise. Melanie is asking, can you use DVC points on cruises? Yes, you definitely can. And using your DVC points on a cruise is actually a really good use of your points. Kate and I were looking it up because we both have DVC and it's actually not as many points as you would imagine. So we definitely in the future would consider using our points on a cruise. And I've noticed loads of people walking around with like DVC member merchandise and t-shirts and bags and stuff. I think there are a lot of DVC members on these cruises. Rogan is asking how does gratuity work? So the tips basically. Um, I'm going to answer that question when I get back to the room. I'm actually going to show you how you do your tips for your servers in the restaurant, the cast member who looks after your stateroom and how all of that works. But when you're going around the ship and you're having cocktails or drinks or anything like that, you add the tip on to any drinks that you're buying and then that will get charged to your room. So that's how it works for drinks and things like that. But I'll let you know when I get back to the room and actually show you for tipping at the end of the cruise, your dining servers. You don't do that every day. You do that right at the end as well as the person who looks after your stateroom. Let me just do one more while I'm here. Yeah. Amy is asking favorite restaurant on board. I think in terms of atmosphere, my absolute favorite would have to be Enchanted Garden. I absolutely love how that restaurant looks. Like I said in a previous vlog, it reminds me of a cross between Plaza Restaurant and Crystal Palace in the Magic Kingdom, but even more beautiful. In terms of the food, Paolo was incredible. Like that was amazing food. But overall, in terms of how the restaurant looks and the kind of theming and everything, I would say Enchanted Garden is my favorite. I'm just gonna head into the shops because I've got a little bit of last minute shopping to do a couple of souvenirs that I want to get Andrew and I have got a little media event this afternoon so Kate and Pauline have gone back to the rooms to do some packing because we are leaving tomorrow there are so many things that I could buy in this store I'll show you this now because I'll have already given it to her I bought my mum this it is salt and pepper shakers and it's like magnetic I think so the funnels are basically salt and pepper and then the ship is the little holder I just think that is so cute so I got her that if I was just let loose to go crazy I could buy all of this I love this porthole bag that is amazing <laughs> and these ears actually that go with it are really beautiful too they have an aerial lounge fly i actually didn't um, see this when i was in here the mm. other day and it's specific to cruise line look it's got disney cruise line lounge fly that is very cool okay, that's beautiful that's... andrew's resisted it though i have i am proud of you because that is i mean if there was ever a lounge fly bag that is is yeah. you I, I mean to be fair if i just seen this two years ago <laughs> i would have just bought it but i'm trying to do that thing in my head now where i'm like if I'm not going to use it, what's the point? Yeah, that's what I do these days. I'm like, resist, resist. It's so pretty. It really is, though. That is amazing. I love that. It is that. gorgeous. It's just... You've got a lot of Little Mermaid lounge I've flies. I've got so though. many Little Mermaid lounge flies. Yeah. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> talking about myself. Walk away, walk away. Get away from me. Okay, we're all done with our shopping now. We've got a couple of little items. And Andrew, you've got some stuff there. He's got a very large bag. Uh, this bag is a bit obscene for the amount of stuff that's in it. <laughs> it's like there's only two things in there. <laughs> 20 things. And, and now we're off to the media event. So we need to meet at Cabana's and we're basically going to be having a talk with the cruise director, I believe, and then also a little kind of bon voyage party. So that's exciting. And once we're done with that, I will answer a few more of your questions. I need to go back to the room to get changed for later. So maybe I'll answer some out on the veranda in our room. That'd be nice. And I do believe out the window there, that is Stromboli. That's exciting. We're just at Cabana's here where we're meeting for this little media talk and I just wanted to show you this mosaic here. Look at Bruce. I love him. He's the best. 
He's the best. Bruce is my favourite from Nemo. So they have these sand castles, and I mean that quite literally. We have Disneyland Paris Castle, Disneyland, Walt Disney World, so you've got Cinderella Castle there. Then Tokyo and Hong Kong, and they have all the clocks. So you've got Disneyland, Tokyo, it's 11 a.m. there. It's 10 a.m. in Walt Disney World. Yeah, I won't be able to film this, but we're about to listen to the cruise directors talking, so I'll let you know what they say afterwards. Okay, I've just got myself changed, and I'm ready for dinner this evening now. I'm going to animate his palette, but I thought I would just answer a couple more questions out here on our veranda. You can probably hear the ocean in the background, hopefully you can hear me okay. On the subject of food, um, several people have asked what is your favorite food on board so far. Someone also said your favourite snack. And I don't know if this qualifies as a snack, but one thing I did want to mention was the churro Mickey waffles that they have at breakfast. They don't have them every day, but they're kind of a cruise line thing. A lot of people have told me about them before I came out on the cruise, and we had them this morning for breakfast, and they were absolutely incredible. So that was one of the best things I've eaten. And I really enjoyed uh, Animator's Palette. There was a noodle dish that I had on Pirate Night, I think it was. That was really good. And last night I had a risotto at Royal Palace. That was really good as well. So those are probably my favourite things. Chloe is saying, please can I share what the cabin is like? And I did do that when we first arrived. So if you want to see what the cabin is like, if you go back to the first vlog, I will put a link to that in the description. Then you can see I showed you around when we first got here. Several people have asked about how the dining works. And I have touched on that in other questions basically when you book a disney cruise and i think this is the case for most cruises but i can only speak for this disney cruise when you book your room so you go online and you book your room that also includes all of your food so you have a dining rotation every evening so there's three different restaurants on this ship and each night you will go to a different one and then if you're on a longer cruise for you know a week or whatever you will do all of them twice and one of them three times you can upgrade to one of the signature restaurants. It's a $50 upcharge to do that one of the evenings. And your breakfast is included, lunch is included, so you can get food on the ship throughout the day, whether it's from Cabanas, which is the buffet restaurant. They're open at breakfast and lunch. Then you have the quick service places on deck 11. They have like a pizza window. They have places you can get burgers, ice cream. They have the drink stations there. All of that is included. Room service is also included on the Disney Cruises so you can order 24 hour room service just bear in mind with that that you will need to tip and in terms of drinks you can get drinks like I was saying from the drink station on deck 11 and you get coffee and tea and sodas and stuff there whenever you're in the restaurant all of your soft drinks and tea and coffee are included if you want to have alcoholic drinks those you will pay for and you just charge that to your room if you want the specialty coffees from Cove Cafe and the other little coffee place in the atrium, those are chargeable as well. And again, it will charge to your room. But other than that, all of the food on the cruise is included. So I hope that makes sense. If there's any questions on that, you can put them in the description. But speaking of food, again, it is now time for us to go off to Artist Palette for our final night dinner. I can't believe it's the last night of the cruise. It has gone not quickly. I wouldn't say the days themselves seem to have flown past, but it has felt like a really nice amount of time. I think a week is actually a perfect length to do one of these cruises. They do have longer and they do have shorter ones, but seven nights um, has been amazing. And this particular itinerary and the ports of call that we have done have been absolutely incredible. But it's not quite over yet. So we've still got this evening and tomorrow, and I'll be doing some more of your questions later. So let's head off to Animator's Palette. Some of you will know what this is. If you don't, we will show you later. To draw a picture, it has to be within the white boxes, and you're gonna see what's gonna happen with this later. And it involves these screens up on the wall. All I can say is that drawing that I did is gonna haunt our dreams. It was that frightening. I mean, it'll give us a good laugh if nothing else. My word. Anyway, let's see what we have on the menu this evening. Oh, they do have a tomato caprese salad. I do love that. Sesame crusted tuna sashimi. Porcini sachetti, which is pasta filled with porcini mushrooms, Swiss and frontina cheese with garlic. And a Malaysian chicken satay, the lobster bisque, and a white cheddar and broccolini soup. That sounds amazing. And dill and lemon shrimp, and a crisp romaine wedge salad. A garlic marinated shrimp, roasted salmon steak, chicken schnitzel, herb crusted rack of lamb, and roasted beef wellington. Then for vegetarian, they have wild mushroom and sweet onion strudel and sesame crusted sweet and sour tofu. Oh, God. 
gosh, thanks for all the great drawings. These are just what I need to whip up a little animation magic. <laughs> I'll be back later, but right now, we invite you to sit back and relax as the dining room proudly presents your dinner. Tie your napkin around your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. Try the great stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. Here is my broccoli and... What was it? Broccoli and cheese soup? Go ahead. Broccoli and white cheddar. Broccoli and white cheddar. And Kate has the lobster bisque. We have our main course and look at Kate's beef wellington. That looks pretty good. That is a thing of beauty, isn't it? Yeah, wow. I have gone for a lighter option because I feel like I ate lunch quite late and I did have that ice cream from Vanilla Peas. And I'm already feeling kind of full, so I have gone double salad. I've got the Romain salad and then this little tomato salad, so this will be perfect for me. Hi, folks! It's me again! <laughs> Just want to remind you, we got a big surprise coming up soon! Have our desserts and Kate has got a cheesecake and that looks like a classic New York cheesecake. It's an amaretto cheesecake. Oh, it's an amaretto cheesecake. Oh, amazing. I wasn't reading the menu properly. It does look exactly like a normal cheesecake. It right? does. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Subtle. Subtle. Nice. I actually have something that was not on the menu this evening. This is the lava cake. They had it on the menu last night at Royal Palace and I didn't realise that this is quite a popular dessert here on Cruise Line. So I didn't order it, I just didn't realise. And I mentioned to our server Melroy that I missed this last night and I didn't realise it was, you know, a really popular dessert. And he said, oh, I can still get that for you tonight. So it wasn't on the menu, but I have the chocolate lava cake and it does look amazing. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is good. So if you get the chance to get the chocolate lava cake, do it, it's really nice. this on the other evenings we've just come up to pack <laughs> look who's here today wearing kate's glasses i am just oh, cracking well, up my that's so funny why has he got long legs if he's a penguin well, i think he's sitting on a rock that's what oh, i'm that's okay. what i'm seeing so like this is him sitting on a rock well, anyway my glasses look splendid they do they do as i mentioned earlier one of the questions that was asked is how the gratuities work or the tips so on your last day you will be given these little envelopes there was also one for sunny who's been looking after our room we've just given that to him and you have a sheet of paper where you can write on there what you want your tips to be for each person and then you put them in these little envelopes and it's customary for you to hand these to the servers and your room host like everyone who's been looking after you that's kind of a maritime tradition apparently we were told earlier and that's why they do it this way because that's just traditionally what is done so you can I think put cash tips in there but a lot of people don't bring cash so you can write on the little slips of paper we've already done these 
and they're inside the envelopes but they're perforated so you can just rip each one off and write on there what you want to tip and then that will be added to your room total and charged to your room so we're just getting these ready for in the morning and you just write on there your name and room number and everything as well so do bear that in mind when you're coming on a cruise it is customary to tip that is definitely the done thing and you would want to because the servers and the person who looks after your room sunny in our case they look after you so well i cannot explain how beautifully he has looked after this room and at dinner they know your name right from day one um, and Sunny has as well like they remember you they remember your preferences they remember what drinks you like um, like I was saying earlier there was a situation at dinner one evening when I was saying about I wasn't sure what to get and Melroy was like oh I don't know if you'll like that um, but I think you'll like this but I'll bring you the other thing as well and you can try it and he was absolutely right I didn't like the thing that I was going to pick so they look after you to a degree that I honestly cannot explain and um it's customary to tip so just bear that in mind and that's how it's done on the disney cruises with the little envelope system so that answers that question that we got earlier and they will also give you this little survey this is very important for them as well for you to fill it in because they really really do want to know exactly what you thought of the experience it asks you about overall experience crew members your stateroom everything um so it's really important to help them out to fill this in so do remember to fill this in um, the night before and then you can hand this in the morning that you disembark. I'm just finding this really funny because I'm kneeling by the side of the bed just to fill this in, it's just easier for me and I am eye level with this guy <laughs> with Kate's glasses on, he's just staring at me. Uh, well I fill in the survey, I feel like he's supervising. So we are back downstairs now and look at this picture of Walt at the top of the stairs and we're here at the Walt Disney Theatre because we are watching Disney's Believe tonight which is apparently an amazing show. I can't film the shows but I'll let you know exactly what it was like afterwards. Oh, I didn't bring my glasses. Oh, are you going to be able to see? I mean, I'll adjust. Kate's forgotten her glasses. Uh, oh no. And it does get quite full for both showings so if you're on the early dinner then you would see the show at 8.30 like we are and if you're having the later dinner then you would see the show at six, I think it is. Okay, we're on deck four, which is where the district is. And I had the question several times today in the Q&A asking about adult activities, things to do for adults that are specifically just adult areas. And this is the kind of evening entertainment area. They have bars and lounges and even a nightclub. They have karaoke in there sometimes. And we're going to pink this evening, which is the champagne bar. So there's plenty here just for adults. They do have areas that are for families and then there are areas that are just for kids. The kids clubs, for example, only children can go in there unless it's called open house. They have a couple of sessions where adults can go in to take a look around. But most of the time, those areas are just for children. And these areas around here and on the upper deck as well, they do have adult only areas by the pool as well so they have something for everyone so we're going to go and check out this champagne bar i'm going to talk about the show in a minute because it was absolutely amazing but i'll talk about that in a second once we get sat down it's my first time going in here kate's been in once before it's so cute, it? yeah it looks so nice oh my gosh look at this this place is amazing i love this this is beautiful i should have spent more time in here this is what happens when you go on a cruise there's so much going on and so much to see and do but you find your favorite little places so if i come back on the disney dream i will be spending a lot of time in here and this is the menu i've spotted straight away there's a pomegranate passion pomegranate is my favorite so i'm probably gonna get that and then they also have wine in here as well and then lots of champagne options. Okay, we have our drinks here. And they even gave us two little macarons as well. That's really cute. Just here having our drinks and as well as the macarons, they've just bought us some little chocolate truffles as well. So that's nice. It is really nice in here actually. This is my preference over, I like the Skyline bar as well, but this is my favorite out of the two. I really like the kind of look and the vibe in here. It's really nice. We're just leaving pink and I just thought I'd show you this. This is outside in the district area. They also have this really nice little area you can sit outside. I imagine that to be quite cosy actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you just want to kind of get away from the bars, you want a bit of fresh air. Okay, I'm continuing our little tour of the ship and I've waited till quite late at night so that it's very quiet because it's hard to do during the day. There's a lot of people around so I thought I'd wait until now and then we can easily see everything without too many people. So I'm beginning here on deck three and I have already shown some of the shops and things so I'm not gonna go into too much detail there but we're beginning here at Walt Disney Theatre so that's where the big shows that happen, the kind of Broadway style shows are in here. That's where we saw the Beauty and the Beast one and the Believe show and they do have a, a little place here where you can get popcorn and stuff and drinks. 
and then it goes around here to the shopping area and there's several different stores like I say I've already kind of shown you around those I've already shown inside of the stores on a previous vlog I will link that below so I'm not gonna show the inside of them now and they're closed anyway but I just wanted to show you this area they're all in the same place here on deck three and this just shows you the different stores that they have so there are a few different ones and then as we come through here we are into the main atrium so this is the midship section so you've got guest services on the left there there are a few people there because the cruise ends tomorrow so i'm sure a lot of people are sorting things out ready for disembarking tomorrow they have some really beautiful artwork here and this is a little dvc desk should anybody want to find out about dvc and this is where you come in when you embark on the ship through these doors and you do have these little boards up which tell you about the activities and events and things like that. You can also find all of that on the Navigator app. And just on the left here, you have the Royal Palace restaurant. So you have dinner there in the rotation and then sometimes breakfast as well. When it comes to breakfast on the ship, you can either go to Cabana's, which is the buffet restaurant, or there's always a sit down option. And that changes by day, which restaurant is offering like a sit down breakfast. Sometimes it will be there at Royal Palace, but you often have a piano player here in the evening. This is where you have all the character meet and greet they're always popping up everywhere the characters very very beautiful atrium you'll have seen this in the other vlogs so far I just wanted to obviously show you this as we're looking around there's lots of nice places to sit as well got some little seating here so a lot of people like to come here just to kind of hang out because it's a very very nice beautiful area and each of the ships has their own statue so on this one it is Donald with his captain costume and on the Disney magic it was Mickey steering the ship and he has his like waterproofs on but this is the one they have for the Disney dream and the beautiful staircase there of course they also have a bar on this level called the Bon Voyage bar and um, we're gonna head around this way and again you can see even more nice seating very similar to the Disney resorts in Walt Disney World there's always lots of lovely places to relax and sit and just everywhere you walk on this ship everything is just beautiful this is a very popular place for getting photos if you sit in one of these little porthole windows I think everyone has to get that photo when they go on a Disney cruise but even just look at these light fixtures and the chandeliers and everything are very very beautiful I'm not gonna tour every single inch of the ship because a lot of the um, decks are just rooms so I will show you kind of some of the corridors where the rooms are but they all look the same in that respect so we're just going to look at the main areas that you'll want to see royal palace in there is all done for the evening and i think on the day that you disembark all of the restaurants will have breakfast and everybody will have their breakfast on rotation the same as dinner so ours tomorrow morning is at animators palette which is right down at the end here we're going to go and take a look that's where our breakfast is and other guests will be assigned to a different one so that's how it works on the morning that you're disembarking and just to let you know on the day that you are disembarking it is an early start because they do need you to have breakfast beyond the ship quite early when the boat docks so tomorrow morning our breakfast is at 7 and for the other seating is at 8 so it'll be 7 or 8 a.m and then you kind of need to be off the ship by like 9 30 is what they would like you to be kind of then leaving so it is quite an early start but the other mornings are a lot more relaxed you can either go to whichever restaurant is serving an a la carte breakfast or you can go to cabanas kind of at your leisure and they have quite good hours so you don't have to get up early every day or anything like that so down at the end of deck three here you have animators palette and there are restrooms dotted around on all of the decks in all of the common areas you can very easily find restrooms and this is what the areas look like where the lifts are so there's several sets of lifts throughout the ship you've got them in the front in the aft in the mid and i think there's like more than one set in the middle of the ship i think um, but there's plenty of lifts they do get very busy at times though when it is kind of meal times or the day that everyone's getting onto the ship there's just certain times of day that it can be very very busy so you've always got the option of the stairs but of course if you were going from like 3 to 11 or 12 that would be a lot of stair climbing so it just depends but if you don't mind that sometimes it can be quicker because just be aware of that the lifts do get very busy at times and they do have these little boards up on all of the decks to show you where you are and you can see the layout of the ship here so you've obviously got forward mid and aft that is always how they will refer to everything so you know where you're going so like i was saying a lot of this section here this is all state rooms so i'm not going to walk around all of this because it just all looks the same and forward on the ship is where you will find um, concierge suites and state rooms you've also got the walt disney theater that's where we just came from then here you have Buena Vista Theatre, which is the other one where they have a lot of the films like the cinema and everything. And you can see this is the shops that we just looked at. And here in Midship, you have Enchanted Garden, which is one of the other restaurants.
months on deck two. This is the atrium and royal palace. We were just there a moment ago. So let's head up to deck four and five because there's more stuff to look at there. And on the lower image, it does actually show you an aerial view of this particular deck that we're on. So that's helpful as well. So you can always see where you are, but it can be confusing at first if it's the first time you've ever done a cruise. So going up to deck four, this is where the district is. So this is the adults only area where they have clubs and bars. They've got a sports bar as well. And this just shows you what they have here. So they have Evolution, which is a club, Skyline Lounge, Pink, which is a champagne bar, Pub 687, which is a sports bar. So this whole area is adults only. And we can walk through here to get back out to the rest of the ship. I think this is Evolution round here, you can hear. And this whole area does have a kind of, you know, nightlife, nightclub vibe going on, as you can see. And that's interesting. They do have some snacks out here as well. So you can get a little late night snack. They've got like mini burgers and some nibbles and stuff. And this is the district lounge that we're just walking through. You have pink over here, which is the champagne bar. It's really nice. It's got like a champagne bubble as the doorway, which is really cute. And just in here is the D lounge. This is where you have karaoke. I think I may have said incorrectly at one point that they have that at Evolution. It's actually not, it's D lounge. So there's some karaoke going on there now. And just next to D lounge, you have carriage jewels. This is not open at the moment, but it's a very fancy jewelry store. And as we go out of this area, we're now coming towards the midship and this is shutters, which is where you can get your photos. I'm gonna take a look at mine right now. They have lots of these screens here. You can go to any of these, tap your um, room key and it will come up with any photos that you've had done and then you have options to purchase them. It looks like this does close at night time, but it says you can look at them on your mobile device. So this obviously is only available in the day by the look of it. Um, if you want to look at them, you can do it online though. And now we're just looking down on the atrium because we've just gone up one deck and you can get a better look at this chandelier from up here. And I did just use the QR code that's on the corner of the screen and I was able to easily view my photos online. So you don't need to use these screens, you can just use your phone. They do have a little portrait studio here as well. I think you can have some more kind of fancy elaborate photos taken as you can see advertised there. And coming down here still on deck four, this is where the theatre is, where they often have films on. So it sounds like there's something on there now. This is Buena Vista Theatre. We were in here for Inside Out 2. Absolutely loved that, by the way, it was amazing. And it has a board outside that tells you what's coming up, so they have the Marvels there today. I think that's what's on right now. And they have popcorn and drinks and stuff here too. And at the back here, you have Walt Disney Theatre again because it is on two levels, so you can also get in this way. And there is a board here that just tells you what's gonna be happening. So some of the evenings in the Walt Disney Theatre, they have the big shows like Disney's Believe, you have the Beauty and the Beast show. Other times they have like a vocalist, and um, they have a juggler. I think there's a magician at some point. And sometimes they actually show a movie in here. So they did have Inside Out 2 on one of the days. The Golden Mickeys is another show that they have here. So again, just to explain where we are. So the Walt Disney Theatre is all the way here at the front. So we're forward at the moment. Mid obviously is the atrium. And then aft is where you have Animator's Palette where we just were. So that just gives you an idea of how it's laid out but it can be a little confusing at first like i was saying now we're going to go up to five because there are some more things to see up there and like i said i won't go beyond that because then it is just state rooms and there are some state rooms here on five but there's also a couple of other things to see as you can see some people have got their doors decorated it says debarkation day that's so cool i think i may have referred to it as disembarkation day a few times it is debarkation and embarkation so apologies if i've said that wrong it's entirely possible <laughs> so now we're just walking through we've gone kind of past where the state rooms are and this is buena vista theater again just one floor up and this desk here on five is for the port adventures so this is where you can come to speak to them about that if you want to book anything perhaps sometimes this is where you meet for them but we've actually met in other places when we've had um, port adventures that were going on when the ship is um, at one of the ports of call so i think that desk is mainly to speak to them about booking something and we can see the atrium from much higher up now looking very beautiful there and it looks as if they are maybe setting things up for tomorrow when people are going to be leaving the ship i think that's why these ropes are maybe out there and just down on four you will have seen us here quite a few times this is the little coffee shop that we've been to several mornings and another thing to mention you will see these dotted around which is the midship in this case, detective agency. And this is a kind of game that you can play going around the ship. It has some information on it here. So you pick up one of these, it explains what to do. Grab a little pencil there too. 
I've seen a lot of people doing this. So this is just yet another activity that you can do. There's so many activities. Someone did ask me that, like, is there a lot to do on the ship? And the answer is yes. There's plenty to do, loads of things like this, activities for kids. There's like quizzes and trivia things and all kinds of stuff like that, especially on a sea day. But they do have things going on all the time. So coming along here on deck five, this is where all the kids clubs are. So this is the It's a Small World Nursery. So this is if you have very small children, this is where the babies come to be looked after. There is an extra charge for this and you do have to book in. So if you have very, very small children, it's very, very cute though. We do actually have someone with us on this press trip who has very young children and they have been very, very impressed with the nursery. Then you have the Oceaneer Club here. They have different kids clubs depending on the age. So obviously you've got the nursery, then you've got this one. They do have stuff for teens as well and like pre-teens. So there is something for kids of all ages. I know some people worry about that when kids are like pre-teens or teens. Um, it can be a bit tricky to keep them entertained, but there is something for everyone. I did actually go in the other day to one of the kids clubs when it was an open house. You can go in and have a look around. So I'm gonna insert that footage here now. <laughs> in here oh my gosh look at this Stop here. I would have been losing my mind in here when I was little this oh, is dang. incredible Oh mate, it's the fact that we've literally brought the ceiling down. Yeah, they were telling us about that. So they make the ceil the ceilings are lower on this deck so that the children feel like it's not too large, if that makes sense, like not too large of a space. The are inside, look. Oh my gosh. This is so cute. They have like a TV screen in here and these little benches that look like leaves. And we've got some Star Wars theming in this area. Andrew's demonstrating. This is like interactive here. If you sit here, it's like, like smuggler's room. I think we need to be in here. Never mind this being a children's here. area. I'm the same mental <laughs> and then we have Andy's room in here. Look at this. <laughs> this is actually the best kids' club I've ever seen ever. This is incredible. Just sat here in uh, one of the little portholes. I just wanted to let you know about the kids' club. So the way it works, kids do have a specific magic band type thing when they come onto the ship and that magic band has all the information that is needed who their parents are what room they're in if they have food allergies or anything like that and when children go into the kids club whatever age they are they're kind of checked in by that magic band so that the people taking care of them know that they have that child there they know their allergies they know the contact information for their parents should they need to call them all of that information and then that way they can be very very certain they know where everybody is and that all the children are taken care of and nobody can disappear anywhere um, so it's very very safe and the children are very well looked after again I have it on very good authority that the kids clubs are great so if you want to go off for a date night or the kids just really enjoy the kids club then you can feel secure and safe that they're in there and well looked after while you're doing other things on the ship and a lot of the kids just love the kids club so much that they just want to keep going in there because it's really good fun so the facilities for the kids on the ship is really really good and then you have the Oceaneer lab this is for slightly older kids and that's actually still still open at the moment so that goes quite late. Room 5148 and a half. Pepe the King Prawn. He has his own room. I'm not sure who that is. That is very cute though. And now we're into the aft section of the ship and of course this is now state rooms. You can see people have their luggage outside their door. I'm gonna wait until I'm past and just explain about this but I don't want to talk too loud because people are probably asleep. And they do have a little laundrette on the ship. It's not very big. They only have a few machines, but you can come in here and use this. If you need to iron anything, they don't have irons in the room, but they have one in here. So on the day that you're leaving the ship, you have two options. You can either take your luggage down to breakfast with you in the morning, and it is okay to do that, or you can leave your cases outside your stateroom. As you can see, a lot of people had taken that option. They will give you luggage labels with a character on it for you to put on your bags. Those bags that you saw there will get whisked away during the night and taken off the ship. And then when you actually disembark, you will then pick your luggage up in the port terminal, and they will call out the character that you had on your labels 
and then you go there to pick up your bag. So it's just an easier way of getting your luggage off where you don't have to take it yourself. But the downside is you would have to have everything packed at night and then just keep your clothes out for the next morning and anything that you need to get ready. For me, I need quite a lot of stuff in the morning to get ready. So I'm just gonna take my luggage with me, but you do have either option. And the rest of everything else is kind of on the upper decks. So I will now cut to that, which I filmed on a different day. Good morning, everyone. It is the day we are leaving the ship. I can't believe our wonderful, incredible cruise is over. I'm now up on deck 11 and this is where the quick service places are. I've come up to do this little tour now when everything is quiet, we're about to disembark. But this was really the only time I could get it when people aren't around and they're not in the pool. So as you come along, you have all of this seating here where you can sit and eat lunch or if you just want to sit out of the sun. And of course, then in the middle, you have the swimming pools and all of the uh, sun lounges and stuff which face towards the big screen and they do play movies pretty much all day every day and if there are deck parties like when we had the pirate deck party that would be up here as well and you don't need to bring towels from your room in fact they don't want you to do that they have clean towels here for you to use and they have these little things which will say use towels you can just put them in there when you're done the donald whirlpool spa here as well You've also got this Mickey slide, which is really cute with Mickey hands. And this is where you come if at any point during the day you want to get drinks. They have obviously like sodas, they've got water if you want to refill your water bottle. So they don't have water in the rooms. You can order it on room service, it's very expensive. And they don't like sell water in the shop either. So you would come here. I would recommend you bringing a water bottle with you and then you can fill it with ice and water. You can obviously get sodas and stuff. They have tea and coffee as well. And this is all included in the cost of your cruise. I love this little section, Nemo's Reef, which is a splash pad area. Obviously it's not operational at the moment because we are disembarking the ship today. Cabana's is the buffet restaurant that is open for breakfast and lunch every day. So if you'd rather have a buffet, breakfast or lunch, then you can go in there. Or you can use the quick service places that I just showed you back there. And this is just showing you a view of the big screen where you can watch the movies. There's another drink station here on the other side, so there's two of these. And I'm just going up now to deck 12. This is where you get on the aqueduct. And just at the back of the ship, you can see here Goofy Sports. So they have a basketball court. There's like a little mini golf thing back there as well. And then if you come around this way and keep walking, this will take you to the adult only area. So we'll take a look at that. There's loads of lounges up on this top deck. I just wanted to get up here while it is completely quiet to show you guys the adults only pool and everything because uh, it's very hard to film it any other time when guests are in there. Let me just show you the main pool from above. And you always have to come up here to get yourself a picture by the funnel. That's always a very good photo to get. Whenever I see this Donald, it just reminds me of Philhar Magic in the Magic Kingdom. This is when you get into the adult only section. So deck 13 up there. They have lots of chairs again, there's a bar up there. And this little section of deck 11 is also for guests 18 and older. So let's head down here for me to show you. I'll just show you over the side. This is what the adult only pool looks like. There's lots of lounges here as well. There's a little bar over there. We'll go down and take a look at this. But I just wanted to give you a look at this because normally there are lots of people in here. So this is it a bit more close up. And they've got the little seats kind of in the water there where you can sit up to the bar called Cove Bar. Just in here is Cove Cafe and you can just see the chairs in there. This is a little coffee shop. We loved Cove Cafe. I spent a lot of time in here doing some work things and emails and stories and all that. I would always come here to Cove Cafe to do that. And again, all of this area is for adults only. So the ship definitely does accommodate for everyone. So this whole section is adults only. I say up here and up at the top, you've got another bar there. So there is plenty of space. And then you just have some doors coming into here. And just to the right hand side, you then have the spa. We did have a pass for the rainforest room. That was really, really nice. They also do treatments in there, all kinds of things. They have a hair salon. There's a gym as well. So if you're looking for the fitness room, you don't have to be going to the spa as such. Anyone can go in here to use the gym. It's time to go. Always a sad time. We have our luggage. We need too many things in the morning. Else, yes. So no. So we've got it with us, but it's fine. You can take it down to breakfast with you. And it's very early because we're on the first seating so 7 a.m is breakfast so i think it's about quarter to seven or something not that early now to be fair but it was when we woke up so when you come out of the elevator from our room we are forward on the ship and we need to go all the way aft to animator's palette 
Luckily, most of it, I think, is hard floor and not carpet because wheeling cases on carpet is never <laughs> very fun. And there's already lots of people getting ready to disembark here. And I will be answering some more of your questions this morning once we get into breakfast and we've had that. There'll be a little bit of time before everyone else is done with theirs, so I will answer some more of your questions then. Here is our breakfast. And on the menu, they had lots of different options. There were pancakes, they had waffles, there was a breakfast burrito, a breakfast hash, I think, as well. Various things. They also had eggs and you could have whichever way you want. I've got fried eggs, Kate has scrambled. They had tortilla as well. Yeah, they had a breakfast tortilla. Uh, we've got toast as well. You could have fruit, um, granola and things like that. They had like muffins and pastries and things that they brought around. So there was lots of choice for breakfast. You definitely would not be leaving hungry. We're definitely gonna miss Animator's Palette. This is the one that we've been to the most. So I think we've had three meals here and our breakfast. So yeah, we're gonna miss this place for sure. So we're done with breakfast now and I thought I would just answer a few more of your questions quickly. One of the things I got asked was, is the Wi-Fi expensive? Unfortunately, yes, it is. It is expensive and um, there's several different packages that you can get. I think if I remember correctly, you could get various ones. One that would just be for like messaging using WhatsApp and stuff like that. Then you have stronger Wi-Fi for if you're wanting to, you know, upload things to social media and stuff like that. But if you want the Wi-Fi for the entire duration of your cruise, it is expensive. So I would recommend if you can possibly do without it, to do without it. Obviously when you're out at sea, you don't get any phone signal, but when you're in the ports of call, you should be be able to get your regular phone signal obviously always check what is included with your particular contract or your phone plan um, but yeah if you can do without it I probably would because it is kind of pricey so yes unfortunately yes the Wi-Fi is expensive another question I had a couple of times is does the ship feel crowded so I just wanted to address that there's only two times I would say that I have felt that things are crowded in any way one is that cabanas can get quite crowded that's the buffet restaurant so if you're there at peak times for breakfast and lunch I did find at times it could feel quite crowded in there we were always able to find a table so it's not so crowded you can't sit down and they do have outside tables as well but it did feel crowded a few times in there and also when you have a day at sea on the cruise it can feel a little bit crowded up on deck 11 where the pool is there will always be a lot of people up on that deck um, by the pool when there's a day at sea and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to find yourself a lounger and to find yourself a space there are always spaces but on a very hot day you might not want to be in the direct sun so definitely finding a lounger in the shade can be a little bit tricky and it can sometimes just feel a tiny bit crowded up there but not crowded as in what you sometimes experience in the park and I'll just do one more while I'm here because we do have to go shortly one of the questions I had is do the state rooms feel cramped because they're smaller than hotel rooms so obviously state rooms on a cruise do feel smaller than your average um, hotel room which kind of makes sense I will say when I did the UK staycation cruise on the magic I had an inside state room and I did find that that felt a lot smaller because I didn't have the veranda. On this one, we've had the deluxe stateroom with a veranda and we really enjoyed having that outside space. It did just make it feel bigger. And if one of us was in the room and one of us wanted to go out on the balcony, if you just want to have some chill time on your own, you do have those two separate spaces. Whereas in an inside stateroom, I do miss having that um, outside space. So that's one thing I will say. But in general, I don't think the rooms feel cramped. They have a lot of space. There's a lot of storage space, wardrobe space, drawers, cupboards and stuff to put your things so it doesn't feel like crazy cramped or anything I think it felt quite spacious I would say if it's possible to spend the extra money to go for a room across the veranda I probably would do it now it's time to go and find Kate and the others I think some of the other people in our group had the second breakfast sitting so we've just had a little bit of time to kill this morning and it is that time we are leaving the ship we're just all gathering here and leaving I can't believe the cruise is over it's been absolutely incredible from start to finish but it is goodbye to the Disney dream and what a dream it has been Andrew is just modeling the uh, Disney dream spirit jersey this is what I was telling you about with the luggage tags so this is the mini section these were the ones that we were left we actually took our luggage with us but some people left it out the night before they bring it down to the area with that um, character and then when you get off the ship you just pick up your luggage and there's various uh, little characters I can see Pluto over there Ariel is over here so you just find your character and your luggage will be there <laughs> oh look it's our last little glimpse we can see the funnels there We're just about to get on our transfer to the airport there's lots of buses here right outside and you can pre-book a transfer once you've booked your cruise you can find out details um, of booking transfers and stuff as well as all the excursions and all of that through Disney Cruise Line
Hey everyone, as you can see, I am now back from the cruise and I just wanted to film a little ending to this vlog. This one was a bit longer, I think, because I did the Q&A and touring around the ship. And I just wanted to touch on a couple of things that I don't think I followed up on. So one was Inside Out. I said I was gonna let you guys know what I thought of it once I was out of there and then we were instantly off doing something else. I absolutely loved Inside Out too. If you haven't seen it yet, I would highly recommend you go and see it. It is my favourite Pixar film that I've seen in a very, very long time. I actually loved it even more than the first one, and I loved the first one. Obviously, in this one, Riley is a little older, so there's different emotions coming into play, and I just thought it was amazing. It was so well done the way that they did it and addressed certain things. It was very emotional. I cried several times. I absolutely loved it. So definitely go and see it if you haven't already. And I also don't think I followed up after the talk that we had with the cruise director that was really interesting we basically got to speak to the person who's in charge of all the entertainment side of things on the ship and also the person who's in charge of all of the kind of logistics and the rooms and the food and the dining and everything so it's really really great to have some time talking to them we were able to ask questions they were just telling us a lot of stuff about Disney Cruise Line the fact that most cruise lines are cruise lines that have entertainment but Disney is an entertainment company who have cruise ships and that's why their entertainment side of things and activities and kids clubs and everything is just next level which I completely agree with. Everything about the cruise was absolutely incredible and completely exceeded expectations to be honest. The food, the ship itself, the service that we received from everybody, the characters, the way you were able to just see them with virtually no line, we just loved it and the ports of call were fantastic it was amazing to see so many places in just one week so i will put some information below about disney cruise line you can see the dates and the itineraries and everything if it's something that you've been thinking about but you haven't gone for yet because you're used to going to the parks i would highly recommend giving it a try at least once they do have shorter cruises where you can do like three or four nights they have the ones that go from port canaveral in florida where you can take a few nights out of your disney world vacation go off and do a cruise and then maybe come back again they have castaway key which which is Disney's private island on that particular cruise that you can do. There are so many different options. There's new ships coming online. You obviously have the treasure coming up, the destiny. They've been announcing some things about that in the last few days. They are also gonna have the new Haunted Mansion Lounge on the destiny as well as on the Disney treasure. And on the destiny, they're also going to have a villains themed lounge. And I think it's like a Cruella de Vil piano bar. So some very exciting things coming up for Disney Cruise Line. Again, I just wanna say a huge thank you to the the team at Disney and Disney Cruise Line for inviting us on this incredible trip. We felt so grateful and lucky to be there and to be able to share it with you guys. It was just one of the best experiences that I've ever had. It really, truly was amazing. And I want to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching these vlogs as always. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed seeing something a little bit different, but I will now be heading back for the next few weeks to the Disney World vlogs. I've got lots more still to come from the last trip that I did. And then I'm going to be going to Disneyland Paris very soon so there'll be Disneyland Paris vlogs and then back to Disney World later in the year for Halloween and Christmas. So there's so much going to be coming up the rest of this year. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe and tap the bell icon. That way you'll always be notified when I upload a new vlog. And if you could give this video and all videos a thumbs up, that really helps other people to find them when they're looking for Disney vlogs. I hope you guys are all well and having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.